this afternoon and maybe picking up even more. We had indications from the reconnaissance plane that the pressure had fallen about four or five millibars. The wind now up to 45 miles an hour and it is not really showing very much movement either. It's gotten just about stationary, maybe just a little bit of movement toward the north, but it's also expanded quite a bit and some of the rain bands, heavy rains have gone inland now in the western part of Florida in the southwest around the Marco Island and Naples. They've had some gusts up to about 47 miles an hour right there at Key West. So two things, it's expanded. That's caused the tropical storm uh, warnings to have to be reinstituted here in the Keys all the way from Dry Tortugas over to Key Largo. Let's put a picture in motion for you and we'll look at the motion now over about the last, say, uh, 12 hours or so. And as we do that, we'll take you back in time and here we are. Uh, we don't seem to have that motion, do we? Well, yes, now we do, I'm sorry. It's uh, moving very slowly toward the north, I think, the last couple hours. The movement has been really very slow, not, not very much movement at all. And uh, let's go ahead now and see if we can take a look at the radar. Here's the radar over the last few hours. And the radar is basically showing us that it's getting better organized. We can tell that also from the Key West because Key West is able to pick, up, uh, uh, to pick it up for us and we can see it uh, move a little bit toward the north each hour, but again, it's very slow and we indicated that we've seen some pretty good rains come in. Now, we think the movement is going to be a little slow, perhaps not quite so far west as we thought it was. That might mean that this is going to be just a little bit uh, closer to the coast. Let's go ahead now and look at the latest particulars if we can. And here we are showing you the wind field. The gale winds extend out over a pretty large area, as you can see, and some gale force winds now have begun to impinge on the coast. We have that frame with the particulars on it. Uh, maybe we can show you. Yeah, here it comes. Uh, this is based on the 3 p.m. advisory at that time, centered at 25.1, 82.6. That was 70 miles to the northwest of Key West, and it was stationary with 45 mile an hour top winds. Right now, it looks as if this movement is going to be mostly toward the north, very, very close to the coast, and possibly, possibly that will mean there's a chance of landfall a little bit farther south than maybe what we saw it earlier. We're just going to have to wait and see how that develops. Farther on out in the Atlantic, we have Lily, that's a pretty good tropical storm. Not much concern yet, but it may be later because it is moving toward the west. Expected to continue to do that. It's about 600, 1,600 miles now east of Jacksonville and moving toward the west at about 14 miles per hour. We have a storm out here in the Pacific with 50 mile an hour winds moving toward the west, northwest of 12. Tropical storm. And across the U.S. First, we'll start you off with an update on old Marco. Marco moving up the west coast of Florida here. But Marco is really not the big story. The big story is this tropical moisture moving from the Bahamas into South Carolina and north into Vir North Carolina and Virginia, just getting unreal amounts of rain from Charleston up towards Sumter and over towards the western uh, Piedmont of North Carolina. Just very heavy rains there. Here is Marco moving up the west coast of Florida. Top winds now near the center of circulation down to 40, moving north at 9. If you're plotting, 28.3, 82.6. And that's just to the west-northwest of Newport Ritchie. Let's take a look at the radar for you right now, and we'll show you that rain spiraling around it. Some pretty heavy rains from this band right here, and they do have some flood warnings out for western peninsula Florida as the rivers have been flooding with the very heavy rains here. Rains three to six inches in the past 24 hours. And as you can see, it's all moving north, and most of the heavy stuff right near the center, and we'll be watching that over the next couple of days, that is for sure. But there's your center of circulation just off the coast and moving northward. Now, as we show you more of our tropical storm, we can see the warnings in effect from Longbow Key to Apalachicola, and we are still looking for some high tides, one to two feet above normal. Don't know why we have Cedar Key there or Flamingo, because the areas of concern are from Apalachicola and down to about the Tampa Bay and Sarasota. Okay, as we take you out into the Atlantic, there is Lily, and you can see it's making a beeline to the west, moving at 26 miles an hour. Hurricane warnings out for Bermuda, but the strongest winds we have seen over the past 6 to 10 hours have only been gusting to about, oh, 50 miles an hour or so. But as the storm nears, we could get hurricane conditions within oh, 12 to 15 hours. And with time, that could even affect the east coast of the U.S. As you can see, it is steaming in, and this could be a problem later on in the forecast. Right now, let's show you this afternoon's weather segment, looking first at our clouds in motion, taking you to the Pacific. There's a lot of action out here in the North Pacific. Strong westerlies are developing a lot of energy, and we can see a front getting ready to move into the Northwest. 
pretty nice in the northwest today, but that will change tonight and tomorrow as this front swings through with rain and gusty winds. Another front moving out of the Rockies into the northern plains. That's coming to a screeching halt here. And with it, Winter warm Simon out here in the East Pacific. Meanwhile, Marco is almost a fading memory. It has worked its way over land. It's now located over southern Georgia. And again, it's weakening quite a bit. But now our main focal point for today is Hurricane Lily out across the Atlantic. Here's another satellite vantage point of Lily, and we can put this into motion for you, and you can see how things have been changing somewhat over the past few hours. Again, Lily rapidly pulling off towards the west. Meanwhile, we have lots of tropical moisture feeding northward, spreading its way from Georgia into the Carolinas, and eventually this heavy rain will be taking aim on the Ohio Valley a little bit later on. Let's take a look now at the particulars regarding um, Hurricane Lily. Well, it's still roughly located about 485 miles southeast of Cape Hatteras, moving again quickly off towards the west at 22 miles per hour, and it's still packing winds at 75 miles per hour. Now, we're expecting very little change in strength for the next 24 hours, but we are expecting it to change its course. We are expecting it to be kind of deflected off towards the northwest and eventually more so towards the north. And at that rate, well, it could take it very close towards Cape Hatteras sometime Saturday morning. But as you know, tropical systems can be very erratic in nature, and it's hard to say exactly where Hurricane Lily will be tracking. But nonetheless, we have hurricane watches now in effect for the entire North Carolina shoreline from Virginia Beach southward down towards Little River Inlet. We also have a heavy surf advisory in effect today, too, for the coastal sections of North Carolina. Meanwhile, in the East Pacific, Tropical Storm Simon packing winds of 70 miles per hour. It's expected to move into some cooler waters, and with that, it should gradually weaken through time. Well, stay tuned. Coming up in the next few moments, we'll take a look. Director Bob Sheets. Dr. Sheets, first tell me what concerns you most at the moment. Well, the heavy rains there, of course, in the uh, western part of North Carolina, that's some of the flash floods you're seeing for the moment. Uh, in the future, we have uh, Hurricane Lily. It's just barely a hurricane at this time that will be approaching at least the outer banks of North Carolina within about 24 hours or so. And so we have a uh, hurricane watch up for that area. Damage and casualties from this unusual uh, confluence of bad weather has been relatively modest so far. Do you see a greater threat in, uh, in Hurricane Lily? I don't think so. It's going to be uh, barely a hurricane if it's that by the time it reaches the coast there. And indeed, that doesn't mean you have to have massive evacuations. Probably the greatest threat to life may be the flash floods that are occurring in the uh, mountainous areas of west North, western North Carolina. The, uh, this confluence that I mentioned has been referred to, I think, by some of your people as a hundred-year event. Apparently something that takes place only once in a hundred. What does that mean? Well, all of these things sort of came together. We had the remnants of Klaus and then, of course, uh, Marco traveling up the eastern side there of the Appalachian chain and, and then a trough of low pressure, the front that's coming through. All those things are creating heavy rains for a prolonged periods. And I think that's the, the big 100-year event you're looking at. Is this a big story in your view? In terms of the impacts in, of the heavy rains as you go up that coast, it's nothing like the Hugo, and certainly people should not be all that concerned in South Carolina or places like that. We really don't think that's going to impact that area. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bob Sheets, the National Hurricane Center. Your local radar, the first, the current local condition. Regional forecast. Your local 36 hour forecast. radar showing any precipitation in your area. Intensity is indicated by the color code at the top of the screen. Hurricane Lily out here in the Atlantic Ocean. Let's set this into motion for you and let you see what it has been looking like over the past uh, several hours. You can see it's continuing, continuing to work its way on towards the, 
north-northwest now, so we're going to have to watch it as it's going to turn more to the north and skirt the eastern seaboard now. How close it'll be to skirting the seaboard is another story, but definitely the brunt of the storm system will be well offshore, so we're going to have to keep an eye on it and see how high the winds will be along some of the coastal waters. Now, let's take a look at some of the information now on the Lily. Newest information just in from the Hurricane Center puts uh, Lily at 32.8 north. New information now, 32.8 north and 72.3 west. 72.3 west, still 75 miles per hour and now moving towards the north-northwest at about the same speed, about 14 miles per hour, but it is now moving uh, towards the north a bit more. And it looks like that the track will continue to parallel the eastern seaboard and by early Sunday morning will be uh, several miles, we'll say 50, 60 to 100 miles off the shores of southern New England. So it's going to skirt northward and come like this. So we'll have to keep an eye and see how close it gets to southern New England around Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket Island. Still a little too early, but it is turning more towards the north northwest. We still have some uh, tropical storm warnings in effect along some of the coastal waters of uh, North Carolina and the inland sounds. Some of the tides may be about one to two feet above normal. One to two feet above normal, we've had uh, astronomically high tides also, so some of the roadways near the beaches may be flooding or washed out. Tropical storm force winds not yet being felt along uh, the Carolina coast. In fact, winds have been about 15 to 20 miles per hour at times, really not that strong as the storm system still away from land a bit. As we check out the probability, still we're lowering it now along the mid-Atlantic because it's going to turn more to the north now. As we take a look here towards parts of southern New England, uh, 22, that means the storm system is going to come closer to this area than any of the others as it will turn to the north and skirt towards the northeast. So how close it gets to southern New England, still a little too early to tell, but something to keep in mind may see some winds increasing along parts of uh, New, the New England coastal waters through Sunday morning. The rest of the tropics, really nothing organized out here in the Caribbean. The Pacific, we have a Simon out there, a tropical storm moving towards the northwest away from any major body of land.